Welcome to another episode. I have a fun guest joining me today that I'm very excited to talk to. And if you want to be a fun person that I would be excited to talk to, then the first thing you should do is check out epicrollbjj.com and use the code podcast15 to get 15% off geese, rash guards, shorts, t-shirts, hoodies, joggers, basically anything you need on or off the mats, Epic Roll has. Epic Roll is gear designed by grapplers for grapplers, which means it's actually made for jujitsu and isn't just a junk rash guard you picked up from a box store. But just because it's not from Walmart doesn't mean it's crazy expensive like some other brands. Epic Roll mixes an incredible product with a price that won't kill you. Plus, you can get an extra 15% off your order at epicrollbjj.com if you use the code podcast15. And I'll do you an extra favor and I'll put the link to Epic Roll in the description so you don't even have to type in the website. But if you want to type the website, it's epicrollbjj.com and the coupon code is podcast15. My guest today is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. He owns Limitless Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Ontario, Canada. He has a very successful YouTube page and he has an instructional out with BJJ Fanatics right now. I'm going to ask him about all of those things. So please welcome to the show from Jordan Teaches Jiu-Jitsu, Jordan Pressinger. Jordan, I appreciate you coming on the show so much. I, I've been a big fan of your content and what you put out. I really wanted to chat with you for a while. So thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I appreciate the invite and I'm excited to uh, be on the show. I have about a thousand things that I want to ask you about. The first thing I always ask when people come on just is the background. How did you get into jujitsu? Yeah. So like, um, it's kind of like, a, I don't know, a long story. Well, I don't know. Basically. So I like dropped out of college. Like I just didn't like, uh, I didn't like the program where I was kind of going in life. And it was just like, uh, yeah, like not really, uh, I just like playing guitar all day. Not sure what I want to do with my life. And I uh, just put like UFC on UFC unleashed on at first. I didn't like it. I thought it was like really weird and like, like kind of like a dumb sport almost, but then I started really, uh, enjoying it and, and yeah, I'm really getting into it. So, um, and from there I just thought, well, yeah, I'd probably be good at this. I could do that. You know, they can, I can. So then I just started training basically. And, um, I started just with jujitsu at first and then because there was no like MMA gym around and um, yeah, then I just fell in love with jujitsu and then eventually started doing MMA too. And yeah, just like, I just thought I could do that. So I did it. It was just like a natural progression, like one thing after the other, after the other. Yeah, basically like, you know, I did jujitsu for like five years before I started striking too, because the big goal is just to get into MMA and like, I know I wanted to be like a UFC champion and all that stuff. And I, you know, I thought I could do it. And, um, yeah, but like, you know, I could only do jujitsu because there's no striking around. And then eventually when I opened up my own gym, then I hired a striking coach and I started striking too. And then I got into MMA and then, um, yeah, I just like, I just, I never really, I don't know. I never really like fulfilled those like plans, I guess, but it was mostly because I had kids and everything and the gym was like a lot. And, but yeah, I think if, I think if I lived like somewhere else, like if I lived somewhere that had like a big MMA program that I probably would have like, um, yeah, I probably would have gone to MMA rather rather than jujitsu. Um, but yeah, I loved I love jujitsu. That's my favorite out of all of them. So like, I'm glad it turned out this way. Yeah, you mentioned having kids. You know, when I was fighting, I didn't have kids. Like I I wasn't married, and I can't imagine now having kids. Like I struggled just balancing kids and jujitsu, yeah. let alone a wife, kids, a family, and trying to fight MMA professionally. So when people can do it, I'm like almost amazed that they can do that juggling act yeah exactly like you know for like people in the ufc and stuff like that like you know that's like their only job is fighting mma for the most part so if they have kids it's, it's still hard but it's not as hard but when you have a job and you have you know everything else and kids it's like so hard to balance everything so yeah those type of people i just i admire them for sure i don't know how they find that time like working full-time and training and everything in their life it's just crazy yeah, that's what I always say about fighting MMA. When you're fighting like locally, regionally, until you like are actually making UFC money, you're basically living like intentionally poor because you can't work like a really high paying, stressful 40 hours a week and train. And then if you mix kids in on top, it's just like impossible. So you really have to just yeah. kind of grind it out until you get that big break, which doesn't always come, as you know. Exactly. Now that I'm like older, not like old, but like 31, I don't really have like uh, aspirations for like competition. I just want to like teach and, you know, have my gym, my YouTube channel. And it's kind of relaxed now. Like people always ask me, you know, when are you going to go pro or when are you going to start competing in jujitsu? But it's like, you know, 
I got so much going on. Like, I don't want to add that to my plate. And I always add things like that. I shouldn't to my plate. So yeah, like I'll put that on the back burner for now, but eventually I'm going to, I'm going to get back into competing in jujitsu, just like locally, probably in Ontario, like in Canada. And, you know, because yeah, I, I know people like, I got this feeling that some people in Ontario think like, Oh, he's got this YouTube channel and everything. He should like prove it. He's like the best or anything or something like that, where it's like, for me, I'm not claiming to be the best. I just, I know I'm a good teacher and um, I know I'm high level jujitsu. So I think I got a lot to offer. So I think some people are funny because I've gotten just a couple of comments like that. Like, Oh, you know, you got to prove, you got to prove yourself, you know, go, go out there and compete. Well, it's like, I got three kids and I got so much going on. Like, I don't really care what they think. I just think it's funny that they, uh, that they, they think that they don't really understand, you know, what it's like doing everything I do. And, you know, yeah. So you've had your school for a while and did you get a lot of pushback on being a blue belt that was starting a school? <laughs> yeah, I did. And like, just in general, I've gotten a lot of backlash in general, for like literally everything I've done, um, within jujitsu and MMA and everything. Cause like, yeah, I don't know. People just get like, um, I don't know, I guess jealous or, or I just think like, oh, he can't do that for whatever reason. But like, you know, I was like, uh, I was winning like so many tournaments. I was doing so well, like, um, like uh, double gold, everything. So I knew, like, um, I knew I had the skill to be able to teach people. And um, yeah, that was always my dream to uh, open a school. So like, um, yeah, CrossFit gym I was at, they asked me if I wanted to start a grappling program. And I figured, well, like it is a little bit early, like being a blue belt, but I was only months away from grading and I was pretty sure I was gonna get my purple belt. But yeah, people wrote all sorts of nasty messages and like, uh, and like comments like uh, to me and, you know, but now I really kind of appreciate that because that was really like, I really, I just love proving people wrong and like making people eat their words. Like it's been like a huge motivator for me. And um, so now that I've been successful on with my gym, with YouTube, I think like that's like the ultimate revenge, you know, revenge is the best success. When you started your school, was that when you sort of made the transition from competing into more coaching or did you always know you wanted to make that transition to coaching? No, I was still like hundred um, uh, percent. My goals were just to compete. And actually when I started my gym, uh, people told me like, oh, you can't, you can't compete and run a school at the same time. It's too hard. But then I actually had the most successful uh, competition experience I've had. Like w w when I was running the school, I, like purple belts, I like beat everyone, everything, I, every tournament I went to, I crushed everyone. And that was when I was like just starting my school and kind of figuring out how to do everything. So you know, I didn't have, like, I didn't see why I, I couldn't do both because like, uh, I still roll just as much. And if I was rolling more because the gym I was at prior, it was half hour away. So I could only go three times a week. And then when I opened up my own school, it went from, it was like two days a week, then three days a week, then four and then five and six. So I was training all the time. So yeah, it was actually like, it made me so much better too. I think teaching makes you a lot better because especially when you're like a blue or purple belt, it's like, you don't want to do anything wrong. You don't want someone to question you or, um, you know, think you're, yeah, or teach the technique wrong. So like, I may need to make sure that I always had all my bases covered. So I would like to study nonstop on YouTube and other resources, instru instructionals, making sure that, um, that it was the right stuff. So like, to say like, you know, I didn't have great guillotines when I was a blue belt, but then when I was like purple and brown, I wanted to teach them. So I researched absolutely everything I could. So anyone have a question and I'd be able to answer it. And, um, yeah, that really helped me a lot to get better. So yeah, there's definitely this element in jujitsu where everyone is like always sizing each other up. And like if you go to a place and you drop into train, people look at you like, oh, you're a higher belt. So I want to test them and see if they're legit or like you have like a big following. So if you go to a school, people are going to be like, all right, let's see how good this guy is. And they like really want to test people in that way. Yeah, I think like it's like that a lot in jujitsu and in life. And I don't really like that mentality because like, you know, I know a lot of black belts that aren't very good. And like, I don't care that they're not very good. It's no big deal. I'm not going to like give them shit or talk shit about them um, to other people. Like it's just the way it is. So like people, people are kind of like that though. They want to like, um, they want to feel like, I don't know, validated. Like they want to feel like, well, that person's achieving this or doing this. It's like I'm better than them. So, you know, I'm going to talk shit about them. So yeah, I really don't like that mentality. And I know that um, I know it's going to happen when I go to visit other schools I don't like the black and brown belts, purple belts are going to try to kick my ass. And um, I think it's going to be really funny, but I'm not worried at all. Like I'm really confident in my skills. So I, I want them to try to do that. And so I can, you know, show them that, you know, they're not going to get what they want out of it. 
I have to actually say that I'm a big fan of the YouTube algorithm just because it brought your page and pages like yours to me. Like I just opened up YouTube and there was this video from Jordan Teaches Jiu-Jitsu and, and that's how I found you. How did you get started doing YouTube? Because you've only been on it for a little bit more than a year and it's really blown up. Yeah. So like just with anything, like if I'm going to do it, I want to be like the absolute best at it. And that's my mentality. Like I got to figure out the best way to do the audio, the best way to do the video, best way to edit. And um, even if I'm not the best, I still want to, that's my goal is to get there. So, you know, I just, I think the reason why I blew up is for a couple of reasons. One, because I put effort into absolutely every single aspect of the video and I'm just a good teacher. Like, I think, um, you know, I've been teaching jiu-jitsu for so long and uh, to adults and kids. I, I teach the kids class um, in my gym. I have been the whole time. And um, if you can teach in a way that kids can understand, then you can teach in a way that adults can understand for sure. And um, yeah, I think like, you know, it's kind of harder for like competitors that, you know, they don't teach um, regularly or they haven't for years. It's harder for them to kind of branch into, you know, YouTube or just teaching in general, because that's not their specialty. But like for me, like teaching is my specialty. Like, you know, I'm good at jiu but I'm also a good teacher. So I think that's one benefit I really had. I just like really good um, at explaining things because again, I've had experience for like six years, you know, trying to find the absolute best ways to explain things to people. So if I would have started the channel, like, you know, before when I was like just starting out the gym, even if I was a black belt, I don't think I would have done as good of a job, but I think it's just everything, you know, just being a good teacher and um, yeah, like really work on the production. So like, you know, when I first started, I bought like a thousand dollar camera and like, I thought, okay, this is a thousand dollars. It's going to be a great camera. It's going to like, you know, be better than other, um, other, other videos on YouTube, like for quality wise. But then I learned really quick that, you know, a thousand dollar camera, it still isn't very good, especially like, um, if you've got like a dark gym. So basically right away, I was like, not happy with like the production value of the, of the channel. And, um, yeah, you can like see that if like you watch like my older videos, like they're okay, but they're not like, uh, not nearly the same quality. So I was like, okay, I know I'm going to be successful and I'm going to, and my, well, my plan was to buy like good, good equipment. Once I am successful, if I figured, well, that's not very smart. It's easier to get successful if, if I'm going to buy good stuff now. So basically what I did was like, I, I went out and bought $10,000 worth of equipment. So like the best camera I could buy, the best lens, the best, um, laptop and, you know, and just like spent like months, it was probably like two months where I was just like hyper-focused on like learning how to edit it and make, and make enjoyable YouTube videos. Like, and, um, yeah, so like I just put absolutely every single, um, ounce of effort I could into it. And, um, it really paid off and like, you know, in the beginning too, I was smart, like to, um, like I used YouTube ads in the, in the beginning to like gain a following. So like the same thing I do with my gym, like I use like Facebook ads to, um, to build it up. And then now I don't, I don't run Facebook ads at all because now it's like, uh, now it's like running smoothly and just like word of mouth gets the job done. But in the beginning, yeah, for YouTube, I used YouTube ads to gain a following. And then from, th from there, like I would get a lot of views um, because now I have subscribers and then that would like push me in algorithm. So I made it like a easier start for myself just by spending a little bit of money. And then now it's like all the money I've spent has been um, recuperated through YouTube AdSense. And yeah, so it was like a really good investment because I kind of, I, from the, from the beginning, I treated it like a business, you know, I knew it was, I knew it was going to be successful. So yeah, like, and I knew I could make money from it. So yeah, yeah, I just treated it like a business, basically. It was worth the initial investment when you know that it's going to eventually pay off in the long run. Yeah. And it's also like, you know, if you spend $10,000 on something, it's like, you don't want to just give up on it and like, you know, and fail. So like, um, yeah, I had like, I have a business consultant for, for the gym. And um, when I was thinking about going full time in the business, he was telling me, um, you know, like, I was like nervous to go full-time and quit real estate. He told me, well, you got to burn the ships. So like we use the example, like um, back in the day when settlers came to North America, uh, they, like their captain or whatever would worry that they'd want to leave. So what they did was they just burn the ships. So now you have no choice to stay here. So the same kind of thing. It's something I spent $10,000 on equipment for YouTube. I, I got no choice, but to succeed, I got to figure out how to do that because just in general, like anything you want to achieve or do, like there's always a way to get there. And it's just about figuring out the way to actually do it. So I think like, like literally absolutely anything people want to do in life, if you want to become a millionaire or billionaire, like there is a path to get there. So it's just, how do I get there? 
And when you spend all this money and, and burn the ships, like you're going to figure out that path. So I'm really glad I did that. And plus I think it's a cool like, inspirational story too. I, I was really happy. Like I was really looking forward to it paying off one day and be able to tell that story. So I'm glad I can now. You had posted on Instagram, maybe it was a couple of days ago, maybe it was a week ago about succeeding on YouTube and succeeding with content. You have to be either first, which you weren't first on YouTube and you had to be different and you had to be the best. And you were focused on being different and being the best. And that really sort of resonated with me a little bit because it made me think about like, yeah, all these successful pages that I follow or people that I subscribe to, they're all different in some way from each other and they sort of stand out. One of the ways that I think your videos are different, not a lot of people do it with instructionals, but you do like rolling commentary. You, you teach a technique and then you're actually rolling and you're, commenta- and you're doing commentary over that technique. Did that start as something that was just another way to help people understand the technique? Yeah. So basically like, so that's like, I wasn't first for that, but um, I feel like I kind of uh, like other people were doing it too, like, but just, they didn't have the same amount of effort or um, they didn't really figure out the whole way to do it. So um, like, like for us, a hobby, he's been doing roll, rolling commentaries for a little while and you know, he does a great job, but like, I feel like what I do is still more uh, uh, accessible to people because I can slow it down and, you know, just like how thought out I, I'm not just like doing it real time. I like, I, it takes me all day to figure out what I'm going to say for, uh, for the commentary. So I think that was like what really set me apart um, in the beginning. And um, the, the way I kind of figured that out, I just like, I filmed, I filmed a role to get footage for, uh, for, uh, for like a YouTube video and then I just slowed it down and then I started watching it. I'm like, holy crap, like you can see so much of what's going on when it's slowed down. So in the beginning, I just do, I just did them full, like the whole thing slowed down, but then I switched it up to like, cause you don't want to, there's like boring parts. You don't want to watch all of this slowed. And so like, yeah, that was like, um, I think that's, what's really, uh, that's what I think rolling commentaries are going to be like the next big thing. And they're already like really starting to, like I see other YouTubers starting to do them. And um, I, cause you know, like video game playthroughs are really popular. And um, I think it's for the same reason people like watching other people do the same thing they do, but they might do it better and they might get insight from them. So, you know, yeah, video game playthroughs are so popular. It's like, it's just a natural progression for jujitsu for the same thing to happen. So I think that um, I was the first to perfect the format and now it's gonna be, it's sketching on now, but wait until like a year or two from now, maybe three years, I don't know how long, but it'll be like, extremely popular like everyone's gonna be doing rolling commentaries and yeah i think i said like i said it's already kind of started but it's not even it's not where it's gonna be it's gonna be even like it's gonna be even more popular one day so i'm kind of happy to like pioneer that i think that's really cool well i'm totally gonna steal your format and also start doing rolling commentaries yeah, when i can get back to training so i'll give i'll give you, you a shout out on the first couple of them so everyone knows that i stole it from you but you I, I you're right that. the way doing like the slow-mo in some parts and sort of moving through some of the, you know, I don't think any part of jujitsu is quote unquote boring, but I, for the sake of, you know, an audience and people watching, I think that that's the right way to do it where let's get to like the actual thing that, that you want to show. Another part of your channel that I really like is, uh, sometimes I would, I would call it like the versus series where you do like black belt versus like jacked army dude was a pretty good one. Yeah. Yeah, that one did really what well is, for me. What's more fun to create for you, the the versus series or when you're doing like pure content instructional and teaching a technique? Yeah, so that's a great question. And um, the so the rolling commentaries are a lot easier to do in terms of like um, my time commitment and figuring it out. So I really like those, but I also like doing the instructional type ones because I really because it's almost like a puzzle and trying to figure out like the best way to structure it and like it's almost like telling a story you know you got to tell a story of like you know that makes sense to people so they can process it the whole time so i really like the challenging mental aspect of that um for myself and but i couldn't there's no way i could do those like like you know every week because they take so long like the one i'm working on right now it's like just ridiculous i've been working on it like just non-stop trying to get it ready because i also have a um it's also going to be a sponsored video by um 511 uh tactical it's like a clothing company and um yeah so that's like a ton of work i like the rolling commentaries yeah for the ease of work but you know sometimes for me personally it can be like 
some sometimes I'm not as inspired to do them. Like if they're like just kind of like a, a quote unquote like boring one for me personally. If it's like, you know, just like me against um, I don't know, like sometimes like the white or blue belt ones aren't as like exciting for me to do, but I recognize how much um value they they give to white and blue belts. So I don't not like doing them. I'm just not as like, you know, pumped up, like, yeah, I can't, I can't wait to get this one up. But like, yeah. So, and like, I always try to make, I always want to get the best, most interesting role, roles for people to watch. And um, so what I did recently, well, actually I posted on Facebook, I'm like, um, I'm trying to find anyone over 300 pounds. I'll give them $500 to come roll with me. And I got a lot of offers. So um, I should have some really good ones coming up soon. Like there's a a 360 pound purple belt that is going to come to roll soon. And, um, he's, I think he's like a pan or world champion and, um, or maybe like a silver medalist. I can't exactly remember, but 360 pounds to double my weight. So I can't, I know that's, that one's going to do really well on YouTube and, um, it's going to pay off my investment of $500. And, um, yeah, I just like, I like showing people that jujitsu works, even if you're, um, smaller, like you just need the technique to do it. And then, yeah, these bigger guys can be beaten for sure. Well, you better beat this guy up or else you're going to get a lot of mean comments on YouTube that you're not legit enough that you got beat yeah. up by a purple belt. So you better give it to him. Well, you know, what's funny, like on, on these big guy roles, I always get comments from people saying that they're fake, that that they're really? choreographed and they point out like the specific like timestamps, like, oh, at 342, this is how you can tell it's fake because he's doing this or whatever. I'm like, you guys are crazy. And I get a lot, I just, I get a lot of, I got all like, I get 99% nice comments and 1% is like super dumb of like people were just writing the dumbest things. And it just, yeah, it, usually I thought I find them really funny, but sometimes they kind of like kind of take the bait and I start like arguing with them and I, I gotta get away from that. Yeah. I, I actually had to like stop reading comments because like you said, they get like 99% good comments on a video. Like I'll do a technique breakdown or something and I'll get a hundred comments that are like, oh, great breakdown, or oh, it helped, or oh, whatever. And then one person's like, no, you're wrong. It's this, this, and this. And then like a person who comments that you're wrong about something always has to couple it with like an insult. Mm -hmm. And I find that I have a hard time focusing on the 99 nice comments. I only focus on the one like negative comment. So I had to like turn the alerts yeah. off on my phone because I would just read these comments. I'd be like, oh, cool, cool, cool. Oh, fuck this guy. Like now I got to spend my whole day arguing with this dummy on YouTube because he had to leave a stupid comment. Yeah, no, I've got the exact same problem. Like I, I do a better job with it now, but um, sometimes they really kind of get to me and like some, some of them even like, um, I don't know, it sounds like dumb, but I, I hate people like comment on my voice saying it's like, I, I don't mind if they say it's monotone and like a nice way, like, Oh, I like your voice. But when they say like, some people are so rude, they're like, I just can't stand it. It's like, and I'm like, it's just the way I talk. Like, don't be, don't be an <laughs> asshole. You know, like, fuck. Yeah. like I've been, I've been monotone since I was a teenager. So yeah, I really hate when people say that, but like so far I've had, um, basically like only like, I only had like two or three comments saying the technique is wrong. And, um, other than from judo guys, it's actually really funny. Like, um, judo guys, like I love judo and I'm not talking shit about judo, but like judo has some like elitists that like think they know everything. And they think that, um, judo is better than jujitsu. Like I have guys like say like, oh, the, you know, the Kimura, that's not what it's called. It's from, it's, or no, that's catch wrestlers. Some, they, the catch wrestlers do the same thing. They like say, oh, this isn't a Kimura. It's like whatever in catch wrestling or, you know, all this stuff. Like, and I don't know, there's, they're so strange. Yeah. Judo guys and catch wrestlers, they give me the most amount of shit. But like, um, overall I've, I've had like mostly only nice comments, but the, I've, yeah, I've only, only I've only had like two or three like comments saying techniques wrong. Like someone like they broke down my whole Kimura chat video saying it was wrong like all this stuff i'm like you're so crazy like just show me your video show show me what right. you know so i right. guarantee it's some like blue or purple belt that's like um just thinks they know everything it's i guarantee it's not a black belt black belts are like respectful and nice and yeah it's like this is some cocky purple belt for sure but yeah those comments like those ones don't bother me but it's just annoying getting rude comments too because um you know like i would never write a rude comment on someone else's uh youtube video whether it's jujitsu or any topic. So I just think like, what kind of person is this? You know, like I wouldn't want to like hang out with them. They're probably not a very nice person. And it kind of just makes me sad in, in a way of like, you know, just kind of the way the world is like most people are nice. And it's the same thing. Yeah. Like 99% of the people in the world are probably pretty nice, but then there's that 1% that's just like, like, why you got to be like that? Like, can you just be nice and like, calm down and not spread hate and negativity? So yeah, it's like YouTube really shows you and 
yeah, it can be frustrating. Yeah, I don't understand the mentality of like, oh, I'm going to shit talk someone on YouTube for a video they made. Um, I just try to leave comments just to help you beat the algorithm. Like if there's a video that I like and I have no real input, I'll still try to comment like, oh, cool video. I dig it. I like it because, you know, yeah. you're trying to help a person out. But people people have this like weird thing about like, oh, I'm on the Internet so I can write whatever I want because this guy's never going to do anything like i'm never going to see this person in real life so so i can comment anything i want um exactly i've also found that leg lock people get really upset if you like i always call it the saddle and someone will comment and they'll say like no that's the 411 no that's the honey hole no that's inside Sankaku. like okay did you have to write that <laughs> did you feel better yeah. because you used the japanese lingo as, as opposed to calling it the saddle people just like yeah. have too much time on their hands on youtube it's like some people they're like looking for um something like they're analyzing the whole video just hoping they find something to point out and like you know and say something rude like man like a couple examples like oh okay just like the other day someone wrote like um how like i don't know how i'm like strong and jacked or whatever and like how it how that's like misrepresenting jiu because i'm strong to do these moves i'm like well sorry for like you know working out and stuff they were like talking so much shit it's crazy or like you know Oh, man, I've had so many weird comments uh, that, that are so ridiculous. Or like one guy, like he's like, it was on one of my uh, rolling videos. He's like, oh, come to North Carolina, come roll with us. You know, we'll show you like real jujitsu and we'll kick your ass and, and, and stuff like that. I'm like, I did I say anything rude to like make you mad? Like, you know, some people take this so personally, they get so mad at me. I don't, I don't get it, but it's just the minority. But, you know, I wanted to, in that case, when that person said that, I actually did want to go or I wanted to fly him out to me because I thought that'd be a really cool video. Like, you know, hater, um, uh, YouTube yeah. rolls with hater. But then my, my wife told me like, no, like don't stoop to that level. But I thought it would be really, really funny. But yeah, maybe yeah. next time. Oh, all these wives always getting in the way with their common sense and their rationality and not letting yeah. us beat up people. <laughs> exactly. So I had it in my way. Yeah, I would have went down there for sure. <laughs> You should have just sent him a free copy of your Fanatics DVD and said, here, learn all this and then come see if it works. I should have. And, you know, like I said, it's purple belts. Like, guys, like, you know, I love purple belts. Not talking, you know, really about purple belts. But it's, I find if it's someone's going to be like kind of like rude and cocky, it's like usually a purple belt, you know, just because they're kind of at that level where they know a lot, but then they don't like, um, I don't know. I was kind of like a cocky purple belt too, to be honest, but not like that. But yeah, I kind of thought I knew everything. So I think it's kind of the same thing, you know, so yeah they're silly yeah i I definitely think as you move through the ranks you start to realize the less you know the more like the the more you train and the more uh the more you get promoted you start to realize the things that you know that you don't know at a white belt you don't know the things that you don't know but the more you progress you start to learn like okay i need to learn and get better at this because i just don't know it but blue belts think they know everything myself included when i was a blue belt but oh me too i was so bad for that it's like the Dunning Kruger effect, and um, uh, a lot of people on um, on YouTube have that. Like, you know, what's really funny too. Like, people always like, man, on, on the one with the Jack Army dude. Um, so many people wrote like jiu-jitsu that it won't work for self defense, and if it was like a street fight, he kicked my ass. All this stuff. I'm like, guys, this is jujitsu rolling commentary. I'm trying to teach you jujitsu. It's got nothing to do with self defense, and um, right. yeah, and they just love they just love pointing that out. But like, well, I think it's funny too because. Um, you know, Bobby is the guy in the video and he's a great dude and no offense to him, but I like, I train MMA too. So like, he doesn't have any striking. So in my opinion, I probably would, I'd probably be able to beat him in, in a street fight. I don't know for sure, but like, you know, yeah, like I train striking wrestling jujitsu, like, and he doesn't, he doesn't train striking. So I don't know why they say stuff like that. And, um, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me. And like, if anything, I think striking is actually better if you're, um, better than jujitsu, if there's a size difference because um, you don't have to worry about the weeping on top of you. Like you can still, if you, like, I'm like 180 pounds. If I can, I can, I think I can knock out, um, you know, if I can knock out another guy, that's my weight. I can knock out a heavier guy. I don't think as you get heavier, you get less susceptible to knockouts. So I just had to be careful not to get knocked out by him. But if you don't have technique, it'd be really hard to do that. So yeah, like, but then I try to explain that to people and then they just like argue with me. And then I just realized, it's okay, I, I'm not going to argue with people anymore about that right. kind of stuff. I got to pick my battles better. And that happened for sure. Well, I posted something on Instagram the other day that was like an arm bar from like bottom side control. And I posted like, I don't know about this. Do, do you think this will work? And people, lots of comments. And it was two camps. It was either 
no, this is, you know, unless it's an untrained person, it's not going to work. But the other camp, which was the louder camp, which was the more aggressive camp, was the how dare you disrespect the self-defense elements of jujitsu. And this, like, why are you getting so worked up, man? Like, it, it, exactly. it's just People jujitsu. Like, why are you getting so mad? Why are you getting so mad? But Exactly. And I think the thing is, too, like, you know, I don't think jujitsu has to be for self-defense because, um, you know, I don't do it for self-defense. Like I live in a small town that's like uh, decently rural and I've never been in a situation where, and I don't think I'll ever be in a situation where I think I'll need to use jujitsu unless I provoke a fight myself. Like otherwise I can use, uh, which I won't, but like, otherwise I can use my words to calm down a situation, you know? So like, yeah, I don't know why people like it's, it, it it's good for self-defense, but you know, for a lot of people, they're not going to get in fights and they don't really need self-defense uh, for the most part. Like, you know, it just depends on your situation, but you know, if a true self-defense I think is learning jujitsu, uh, wrestling and striking. So that's just MMA. Like there's no complete system. Like you there's, cause if you only train striking, you get taken down and then now you're screwed. If you only change jujitsu and you get knocked out, well, now you're screwed. So yeah, I think any argument for self-defense, the person is just train MMA. And when it comes to jujitsu, like even if you have a sports style, like you're going to change it as you're fighting, like you're going to not do barren bolos and stuff like, or anything weird inversions, like, and they have the guy just, you know, hit them. Like, for example, I'm pretty confident it's like the Meow brothers, like they do invert sports jujitsu. If they were getting a fight with an untrained person, they, they would win as long as they're like not too big, but like they, they win no problem because they wouldn't be doing all that stuff. They would be sticking. So what's going to work in that moment and choke that person out. So yeah, I just think it's really funny. People comment. Usually it's people that say that stuff of self-defense. Either they don't train or they're like not like the best at jujitsu. So like they're more like limited in their skill set and knowledge of what actually will work. Yeah, I never understood the argument that like if you don't train specific self-defense jujitsu, but you're a purple belt and you're more of a sport competitor, you won't know what to do if someone tries to mug you. Like, you're just going to get robbed by everyone who tries to rob you because you don't train the exact specific self-defense movements. Like, you're just going to collapse. So I, I agree 100%. And I actually, when you were saying about, like, you're not going to do barambolos and the meows, like, that's the thing I say all the time. I'm not going to barambolo a guy in a street fight, but I'm pretty sure a blue belt in jiu-jitsu can handle themselves against an untrained attacker. But exactly. And in that case, you know, it's better to have jujitsu than not have it, you know, yeah. right. Moving away from self-defense to more sport jujitsu. How did you get linked up with BJJ fanatics to do your bottom half guard instructional? Yeah. So they just, um, they just sent me a message on Instagram and that was like, uh, a super like happy moment for me. Like I just, when I saw it, I was like, Oh my God, like, you know, I can't believe it because I just that was you know I never imagined like being on BJ Fanatics. I didn't think that was, I like I don't know I just didn't really view that as a possibility so much before. And then yeah they they asked I'm like definitely I want to do that but now I'm not sure, you know I'm probably not going to do any more with them like they they asked me but um you know I can just make my own now and uh, you know I love BJJ Fanatics I think they're great for the sport and everything but I think that a static camera is not the way to make instructionals and. Um, you know, you need to move, move the camera around. So, um, I, yeah, that's one thing I didn't really, that's one thing I don't really like about their process. So I think doing it myself and, and doing it every way I like it is the best way to get the most amount of value instructionals, but I'm not even sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to do more instructionals or not, because, um, now that I am making money through sponsored videos, um, you know, I, I, I kind of feel like, um, that's a good way to monetize myself on YouTube. And I don't know if I need to, you know, I don't know, do more things like, cause I don't, I worry about, I'm going to run out of content. So if I give like a, uh, sorry, can you hear my dog in the background? Just a little bit, but you're fine. Okay. It's not too bad. Okay. So yeah, I worry that like, if I like, you know, say do like a guillotine instructional and then, um, and then like, you know, and then I, and I can't do a guillotine YouTube video. And it's also, it's not your style at all. So you're sort of, you have to adapt a little bit of the way you teach and the way you talk about technique when it's like a foreign style. It's like you lose your home field advantage a little bit when you can't do it like exactly your way. But it's also it's got to be like a little bit of a validation, like like a jujitsu blue check mark where, you know, all right, I want BJJ fanatics. Like, obviously, people are responding to my content that I've gotten to the point where I'm in the company of all these other great people who are on fanatics. Exactly. That's exactly how I felt. I felt like validated at that point. I felt like, 
all my hard work and everything, it really like came down. I really like paid off and that, you know, I was being recognized for it. I know you had said your goal for YouTube was a hundred thousand subscribers. And I think you're at like 75 ish range. I'm sure you're yeah. going to get to a hundred pretty soon. We touched on a few things you have in the works, but is there anything else that you think is really going to push you over to that hundred K mark? Um, yeah, maybe that, uh, I'm going to do that roll with that 360 pound purple belt. I think that'll uh, give me a lot of subscribers because this, this is the, the Jack Army dude one that gave me like a ton of subscribers, a ton of growth. So I'm pretty confident that one will give me a lot too. And uh, I have some other content planned um, that I think that will uh, really help grow uh, the channel. And yeah, like that's my goal is to get 100,000. But um, I think I can do even more eventually. Like, you know, I think that I like, agree. Yeah. Like I'm really confident uh, that, you know, I want to be. I want to be the number one YouTuber. Like I want to have the most subscribers. Like I love, I think everyone else is doing a great job and, you know, I really love the just to YouTube community, but like, you know, I want to be number one. Like, that's just like, that's my goal. Like with everything, I want to be the number one. So, you know, I want to eventually have like 300,000 subscribers or even 400 or something like that. But at the same time, I'm not sure how much, um, I'm not sure like uh, how much a YouTube channel, just a YouTube channel can really sustain of like how many subscribers, you know, what's the max it can go at, you know, is it a million or is it 500,000? Because right now I think the most uh, Jiu-Jitsu, I think the most subscribers for a Jiu-Jitsu channel is about 300,000. Um, I think it's Chewy, Chewy's got 300. And I think BJJ Fanatics has about 300 as well. And um, yeah, so I just got to keep chipping away and keep working at it. And, you know, I'm going to get there. And I don't mean that like cockily or anything, because I know some, sometimes people misinterpret like my words or, or and yeah, I don't, so I don't want anyone thinking that, oh, like, I'm not being like nice saying that, but yeah, like I just, yeah, I'm going to work hard and I want the number one spot. So, but everyone, everyone, yeah, everyone's doing a great job too. So like, you know, I want, I want everyone to do well. And that's one thing too, like, you know, I really think that a rising tide uh, sails all ships and um, the more YouTube is thought of as like a place to be to uh, learn jiu-jitsu, the more everyone benefits because actually like there's there's, there's been this like weird um, stigma around learning jiu-jitsu on YouTube. Like it's like, oh, you know, YouTube top team or something. You can't like you, you learn everything on YouTube, but like, like why not? Like what's it's just, it's just it just hosts videos just like BJJ Fanatics. They host videos and instructionals. So. I kind of want to change that, um, that like mindset people have. And because yeah, people, there's so much value and there's so many great YouTubers out there teaching great, great jujitsu. And, you know, I'm happy to be one of them helping people. And, um, yeah, I think we can just elevate the sport that way because, you know, I get people messaging me from like the Congo and like, uh, Kuwait, all these cool places saying how much they love my videos, how much they learn. And they don't have like that same level of instruction where they're at. I mean, they can't afford it's kind of instructionals from like, you know, Gordon Ryan or Dana Hart. And maybe, maybe they don't know how to torrent either, but, um, <laughs> so yeah, I, mean, I got to teach them. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, yeah, like, uh, so I think it's really great. Uh, yeah, just, I find lately the jitsu landscape, the jitsu YouTuber landscape has really, um, elevated like crazy, like, like Tyler Spangler. He's another good YouTuber. Like he does very YouTube, YouTube videos, very similar to mine, you know, like 4k slow-mo, all that stuff um andrew wiltsey he's really upping his game like he's he's doing a great job on youtube and uh i mean yeah like john thomas too like um he's he's doing great he's a great youtuber and you know i think that um yeah, everyone's just been killing it lately and i don't think it's like because of me or anything but i think that i have had an influence on people to kind of up their game and um you know add more editing elements to their game maybe get a 4k camera and um do rolling commentaries and all these things so again not, not like not because of me but just that kind of influence because you know I've, i feel like i've kind of raised the standard um on youtube just because i've done all those things and um yeah, i'm really happy to see it so i can't wait to see like the landscape of jiu-jitsu uh, being taught on youtube and like in the coming years i think it's just gonna get better and better and better yeah and like you said just because you want to be successful doesn't mean that you also don't want other people to be successful other people can be successful too without like bringing each other down. But exactly. if someone isn't following you, isn't subscribed to you, where can people find more information from you? Um, yeah, they can just search Jordan teaches jiu-jitsu um, to find my channel because yeah, I had to name it that because my last name is too hard to spell for people. And um, so yeah, just they can search Jordan teaches jiu-jitsu anywhere. And YouTube is the place to find me. I have a Facebook and a TikTok, but I don't like ever post on it because I'm way too lazy and busy to do that. And so yeah, Instagram too. People can check me out and yeah, that's it.
Well, I'll link to everything below in the description so people can just click it and find your stuff. Jordan, I really appreciate you coming on and, and talking to me. Like I said, I'm a fan, so I was excited when you responded and said you would come on the show. So I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we can do this again sometime. Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks for having me. I had, a, I had a great time, great conversation. And maybe I can come up to Ontario when I can actually roll again and steal some of your subscribers by getting beat up for you for a video. Yeah, do it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Where, <laughs> where are you at? Are you I'm in New place? Jersey, so I'm probably you know three hour flight from you. Not too bad. I could make it happen if I was gonna. No, I was gonna come up and get some good content. We could make it happen for sure. Exactly. I think it's only like a seven hour drive too, so not too bad. Either or, you know, it's good. Not too We're bad. Come down there sometime too. I want to travel. That's all I want to do. I want to travel with you know with. I want to use this to like be able to travel and see different places. It's hard with like family and everything, as I'm sure you know. It's like it's got to be like yeah. I can't like go away all the time. So, but hopefully, I can come out there somewhat soon. Well, that's what I've been saying all along. My whole goal with doing a podcast and trying to do some stuff on YouTube is to, if I can finance a vacation where, hey, we're going on a family vacation to Australia, but I'm going to stop in and train with Lachlan Giles and go to a couple of different schools and maybe YouTube ad revenue will pay for that. That's the goal. So exactly, we can. Uh, I'll put you on my world tour, and then you can add me to yours too. And we'll, uh, you'll help me a lot yeah. more than I'll help you, but I'm still going to take, I'm going to take advantage of it. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, we'll do that for sure. That's uh, sounds good to me. Thanks, Jordan. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Big thanks to Jordan for coming on the show today. I really enjoyed talking to him. I put all of the links that you need in the description below this episode. So make sure you check out Jordan and all of the things he's working on. If you enjoyed this episode, and if you're still here at the end of it, I'll assume that you did. Why not smash that thumbs up button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. There are some other videos over here you should check out next, and I will see you all in the next episode.